Monica with PitCam, and I'm here with Tom and Sam of Architects. Hi. Hello. Welcome back to Berlin. Hi, oh, yeah, thanks. How's the tour going so far? Really amazing, actually, yeah. It's been, it's been it's fucking been amazing. Fun tour, yeah. yeah. Just really busy shows every day, and um, whenever we tour with Bring Me the Horizon, it's good. So, anytime. It's nice to, we haven't been to Europe in a while as well, so it's nice to kind of come back and see, you know, how we're doing. Love me, Europe. Love me. <laughs> Here we go again. Have you noticed any uh, progression as far as the crowd uh, goes? Um, are more people into you? Difficult one, actually, to take. Difficult one <laughs> to take because our last tour was with Under Oath, and I think it was a really different crowd for us, even though I don't think our sound is that different. But before, so we've been touring with heavier bands like Despised Icon or, or whatever. And I think that was a different crowd. So I don't know, we, it, it was a long break. It was 11 months without us coming here. So I think it, may, maybe it is better. It was better than our last trip to Europe, I suppose, yeah. Definitely. But um, a lot more kids singing along and uh, people seem to know who we are a lot more, so. Don't go on about it. Our, al our album came out um, in the fun. middle of the, this tour as well. So it's been cool seeing more people know the new songs as the tour goes on as well. So cheers, guys. So the album has been well received so far. Well, by uh, by some sections of the of the public, other people hate it. Really? Why do you think that is? Because fucking idiots. Well, he's got an opinion. My opinion is just that it's very different to our previous stuff. So people don't like. But it went, when bands change, and I I get that. You know, I understand that. Was was that a, a conscious uh, choice on your part to really. to do no, it I like that? It was that? very normal. Yeah. It was just we just wrote a record like we'd write any other record of our records, and it just it kind of is what it is. And there was never any discussion to be let's sound like this now. It just yeah. just came out that way. Was, I think it was just like what felt right in the in the studio, and when we, when we were practicing, it was kind of just it wasn't even really discussed. You know, it was just like oh, you know, we're enjoying playing this. This like this song sounds cool. And I then, think we knew that know. we didn't want to be like a lot of the other bands around. I think even when we were playing heavier stuff, we would tour with other heavy bands and feel different to them because we wouldn't have so many breakdowns and stuff like that and all the other kind of cliched um, metalcore things that metalcore bands do or whatever. So we always felt a little bit alienated from the rest of it so i guess we just always felt like we could go off and do whatever we want anytime mm. but yeah that's going to upset people that's all right <laughs> um the album is called uh, the here and now um why that title any particular story behind it um just well i think the the idea of the title was just to have something that was um positive because and it's just about you know in, enjoying what you're doing and and kind of as silly as it sounds like looking on the bright side of life and just enjoying enjoying it as best you can because you know everyone's got shit they're dealt with and and uh and that sucks but you know you only get to do it once so just uh appreciate it and enjoy it um because a lot of bands you know a lot of it's a lot of negativity in this genre and stuff and that's fine because i you know i don't have a problem with that but it's just um a bit boring i think you know everyone always being it's all fucking, I broke up with my girlfriend, or, I, you know, think, the world's fucked up. I, oh. I think for us, for, for a while, we were kind of in, in that kind of negative thing as well, but not really being negative people, oh, you know, and not being, fuck's sake, not being negative people and not, like, you know, we're all happy dudes, we all have fun, we all enjoy what we do, so we kind of felt like with this record, we might as well, you know, be a lot more positive and kind of show off, like, who we are as people instead of moany people. He's the one that's been whinging anyway in the past. Absolutely. Oh. Wow, wow. Bur yeah. Buried at sea. What's that about anyway? When were you buried at sea? Liar. Should have done this interview on my own. You didn't want to though. Nope. Um, you, you did a video. <laughs> you did a video for uh, Day In, Day Out. Um, you did. <laughs> tell me about it. I didn't ask to be in it by myself. I was told I was in it by myself. It's just, it's just kind of, um, just kind of gay shots of Sam in it, climbing over shit, hanging out in the sea. Oh, love me. Oh, look how pretty I am. 
Yeah, we shot the video. Um, no, you, I didn't. Well, no. I wasn't there. I, I sat, was there. I sat at home. I was there. I chose the locations. Uh, no, we worked, we we did well we did a video with uh, with Stuart Birchall who did uh, uh, the follow the water video that we did before, and uh, and we just he approached us about with the concept and I came up with the locations because it was uh, very near like my house and and it pretty much was just fun going to all these places where I, where I grew up and just walked around shooting and got up stupidly early in the morning to go and do it and. Uh, no, it was it was really fun, and and then at the end, obviously, there's the the live footage from uh, from our, our last London show at the Coco, which was like one of the best shows we've ever played. So it was nice to kind of have that at the end as well. You know, it was a, a bit of a statement for us. So it was wicked. It kind of fix you on a budget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, Stuart. I think it's a great video. Thank you, Stuart. It... Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it is good. I mean, I like it. Oh. I'm just pretty sure Coldplay he's, probably... He's just done our new video anything. for Learn to Live, which is the next single, and uh, it's not out yet, but see, seeing the edit, it looks uh, really it's good, doesn't great, it? Yeah. It's not that good, Jesus but it is good, though. When are you going to... When are you planning on doing, doing that? I think it's going to be out in the next kind of couple of weeks, I think. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah next couple of weeks, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, Andrew Newfield of Comeback Kid um, provided you with some guest vocals, um, one of the tracks for this album. How did that come to be? Uh, we've known Andrew for for a while. We've <laughs> we've known Andrew for a while. We've done a lot of tours with Comeback Kid, and uh, we've done tours with uh, his other band, Sights and Sounds. And uh, only two tours with Comeback Kid. It's not that many. Yeah. Right. Um, three tours with Comeback Kid. Is it? Yeah. Soundwave as well. Soundwave. All right. Fact file. Know it all. Do you want to answer the question? <laughs> Go on. Go on. Answer the question. You do it. You're the vocalist. Oh, my good God. Um, and Andrew... <laughs> <laughs> Andrew uh, asked me when we were in Australia if I, I would sing on their record. And uh, I said I would love to as long as he sang on ours. And, and that's that's where where that happened. He was. Uh, they were actually recording uh, Symptoms and Cures while... Uh, we were in the studio and he sent over files from Toronto and sent them over to where we were and it just worked out great. Anything to add there? Nothing, that's everything. Not good. Is there any particular thing about this album that you're um, proud of, like really proud of more than the others? I'm proud of just doing what I, that we had, had the guts to do what, what we wanted to do and not worry about... Um, all, all the, you know, people that... The shits. Sangles and the shits. I think, you know, like, I, I really like that the people connected so much with our last record. And, you know, obviously, if they like that one and don't like this one, then that, that's a shame. But I hope that, you know, they, they can still enjoy what they did enjoy about our band, you know. But we couldn't not do what we wanted because, um, because of someone else. Because that's... Well, that's, not, that's never what we've done. Yeah. We've never, and we did have more pressure to do that on this record than any other. And we didn't do it. And I think... Um, <laughs> Uh, I think that's cool. I think <laughs> I the, one, the one thing that I, I find very weird about seeing all the, the comments and stuff is when people say, this is a good record, but it's not an Architects record. I'd like this record if it was an Architects. Well, it is Architects. It is the same five people. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we were in the studio doing it. If pretty sure we recorded Hollow Crown as well. Because if that's not Architects, who then who are we? Because we recorded it. Did we split up? This is some real inception. And that's the thing, I think I might have entered a coma at some point. Yeah. And then I came out of it and I thought, I'm going around going, well, this is a new Architects album. Mm. People are going, no, it isn't. Mm. I'm going, well, are we who am I? Are we in Berlin or are we... Who am I? Am I still... I think you're Tom. It's confusing. Mm. It is confusing, but they know better than us, so I'm not one to argue. Right. It seems to be a pretty common thing uh, with the metal community that bands that put on records that differ a bit from yeah. the previous releases, they get a lot of shit. Why what, what do you think that is? Uh, I think a lot of people, uh, a lot of people are entitled to their opinion. And, and I think uh, some records mean, mean a lot to people. And I think, you know, as Tom said, I think Hollow Crown was a, was a time and a place. And I think a lot of people love that record, you know, and that's great. Uh, thanks for liking that record. But bands can't stay the same. If you stay the same, it just gets boring. And, and sometimes people aren't ready to progress with you. You know, some maybe some of the people that like Hollow Crown in maybe a year or two will 
really like the here and now, but I think you know, I think people are just scared of progression and I think it's in all genres. I think it mm. I think it's you know, you see it happen with bands even like Kings of Leon mm. changing from their original sound or or Thrice and you know, yeah. you, you still go and see Thrice at I saw them at Reading Festival and you still got people in the crowds like booing when they play new songs and stuff like that. I mean, these people are morons. I mean, to say, to, to have an opinion is one thing, but to boo a band because they play their music is, I mean, <sighs> it, it, absolute idiots. Yeah. Not thrice, the people in the crowd. Um, but I think it's just, you know, people develop like an attachment to a band and they don't like it to change and... You know, I think I'm guilty of that sometimes as well. I don't go on the internet and go, wow, 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 R.I.P. this band. Because, I, I mean, I don't know what's happened to I mean, That's them. childish, isn't it? It seems childish mm. to me, especially when you look at it and it's like fucking Jimmy Joe Jackson, three years old. He likes Attack Attack, you know, and My Chemical Romance. And he, all of a sudden he thinks he's a music critic. Mm. Anyway, what a cunt. That's not a person, that's... If he was three, and using the internet, I'd be impressed, though. Yeah. I'd actually let him off. Majority of them are just idiots. The ones that... Some people just open them up before they've even given it a chance. I think, I think a lot of people would just uh, write stuff off just because other people are. Like, oh, this isn't cool, so I'm not going to like it. Which is fine. I don't like the we're record, not and I'm not like, <laughs> I'm just joking. We're, like. not a, we're not a cool band. We're not like a band, you know. I, mean, I think you're cool, man. I think you're cool as well. Thanks. All right. Sucking me off. Oh, Tom, you're so cool. This shouldn't be happening. I nearly missed out on that one as well. Yeah. Pulled it back. This really, the love me shit shouldn't be in interviews. <laughs> but it is. Oh, mummy, the love me shit shouldn't be in interviews. You guys want some me. privacy? It's not just me that gets the love me thing. I think we should probably speak about Gene. Maybe just pull Gene, Gene Bambi, our guitar tech. Our Gene... drum tech. That's drum what, tech. Did I say? He said guitar tech. He's not a guitar tech. He's a drum tech. And uh, he loves us. He worships the ground we walk on. He is. He's a little fucking cocksucker. Yeah. Ah, oh, he's going to hate that though, isn't he? Ugh. I love him, really. Gene Bambi, I love you. He, he did our album artwork as well, and so we thought we'd bring him away. You've got to throw a bone out. to the little people. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, John. That Sorry, wasn't John. arrogant at all. <laughs> He's going to hate that. He's going to hate that. <laughs> Sorry, John. He's actually a very talented graphic designer and one of my close friends. Oh, John, love me. Love me, John. <laughs> Sick of it. Sick of it. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I can tell. <laughs> um, any...